Well, Ram fans, another weekend, another severe case of deja vu for the football team. After another loss, I'll give you my midterm grades for this team's offensive performance. Ever wonder what it was like to pole vault? We certainly did. So we strapped a camera to CSU pole vaulter Morgan Griffin's head to see what it was like. And just when he thought 18 gold medals was impressive, see what Michael Phelps did when he faced a 153-foot putt. All this coming up on CTV Sports right now. Hello and welcome to CTV Sports. I am Scott Houston alongside Miss Riley Adams. And Riley, the football team loses again. But unfortunately, this week, the fans had to sit in the cold and watch it. Yeah, I feel bad. It was not a great performance by the football team, all. especially for the homecoming game. But Scott, save the rest for later when yeah. you grade the Rams offense. <laughs> but right now, let's get everyone caught up on CSU Sports News in and around the fort. Some unfortunate news came for CSU basketball last week. Senior guard Jesse Carr learned that he tore his ACL and will not be able to play this season for the Rams. Carr injured himself in practice two weeks ago and found out the extent of the injury last Thursday. Carr averaged 7.2 points per game, shot 43% from the three-point line, and led the team in assists. Carr is not unfamiliar with injury, however. He was redshirted in 2009 after a groin injury. However, Carr could possibly receive another medical hardship extension for a sixth year of eligibility, so hopefully he will get another shot to play at least one more year for the Rams. Now sticking with basketball, while they did lose Carr for the season, the Rams added a new recruit today for next season. Aurora Central guard Carlton Hurst announced via Twitter that he is committed to CSU. During her senior year at Aurora Central, he averaged 23 points per game and had a shooting percentage at just under 50%. Hurst had also received offers from New Mexico and Pepperdine, but decided to stay in Colorado and play for the Rams. And finally, the Rams volleyball team did not disappoint the homecoming crowd last Friday in their version of the Border War. The Lady Rams swept the Wyoming Cowgirl volleyball team, winning all three sets. Since the Rams' last loss against New Mexico on September 20th, the volleyball team has won three straight games, and in those three games, they have not lost one set, sweeping Nevada, San Diego State, and Wyoming. The Rams' next game is this Thursday at Fresno State. Now, when you think of pole vaulting, you think of what, one of the most adrenaline-inducing sports. The pole, the sprinting, the jumping. It takes an elite athlete to compete in pole vaulting. So sports anchor Ryan Hillman went to check out one pole vaulter that is excelling at Colorado State. Pole vaulting, one of the hardest things an athlete could ever do. But to one athlete, it's her passion. It happens so fast that I don't really notice it anymore because it's about it's like a fifth of a second off the ground. Um, but it's probably the best feeling compared to any of the other events, I'd say. Morgan has been pole vaulting for eight years. But the question is, why pole vaulting? Well, I first started as a freshman here, and I actually competed in the women's um, heptathlon, and that's seven events outdoors. And I liked them all, but I really loved pole vaulting the most just because I excelled in it. Morgan and her coach know this season is going to be a good one, but she must focus on one thing, consistency. Consistency is the biggest thing I really want to see. I don't, I mean, I'd like to see her helping, you know, contribute conference and score a conference and, and be a team player in that aspect. Coach Colley is ready for Morgan to set the school record for pole vaulting height, but knows she still has work to do. She's an incredibly talented individual to where the limits are where she ends up defining them, I think, more than anything else. So can she make the Olympics today, you know, at some point in time? Can she hit that school record and stuff? I think it's easily a possibility. But it's just believing in that process, slowly working hard towards what she needs to do and keep building from there. Well, the sky's the limit, literally, for, for her. Pole vaulting. One of the hardest things an athlete can do. Ryan Hillman, CTV Sports. Morgan and the track and field team kick off the season on January 11th at Air Force. Make sure you stay tuned to CTV as we will update you with everything that's happening with CSU track and field. All right, well, coming up after the break, I give the Rams offense their midseason grades. Spoiler alert, they didn't get an A. Bring out the action hero in you. Be part of the greatest action movie ever. Show us how you train and eat like an action hero. Join in at actionheroalliance.com. 
Packers. Vikings. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. It's every student's favorite time of year, midterms. A time when exams are piled on top of homework, piled on top of normal class, and full-time work. But the football team is made of students, and they are not exempt from this. So it is time to give the offense for the football team their midterm grades for the first half of this season. We'll start with quarterback play. Starter Garrett Grayson showed some improvement from last season and really cut down on his interceptions. But very few times throughout the first half of this year has he been able to sustain a drive. He went down in the Air Force game and was replaced by senior MJ McPeak. Now McPeak has shown similar glimpses of success, but has experienced the same struggles that Grayson did. Low completion percentage due to no open wide receivers and no time in the pocket. I've seen the potential from both of these guys, but it, it has been very unimpressive. Midterm grade, C minus. Now on to the running backs. This was supposed to be the forte of the Rams offense, but has been almost invisible. Nagging injuries has kept star Chris Woke off the field and backup running back Donald Alexander has been pretty beat up too. They've shown glimpses of their potential, but have not had the holes to run through. The offensive line has let defenders get to the backs before they've had time. Disappointing start, but not entirely their fault. Midterm grade, C minus as well. All right, now for the wide receivers and tight ends, no one was expecting too much from this group and they still disappointed. The lack of speed and separation from defenders have led to very difficult throws for the quarterbacks. Tight end Crockett Gilmore has been a very small part of the offense despite that he is one of our best weapons. Good cuts and route running is the only way for this core to avoid academic probation in the second half. Midterm grade, D. Now finally, the offensive line. This group has been the core of CSU's offensive problems. They haven't made the holes for the running game. They haven't given the quarterback enough time to pass. They have been dominated in almost every game except the one against CU. If they can't turn it around, any hope remaining for this season is lost. D minus. Now, before you say I've been too harsh, which most of you will, the Rams offense ranks 117th out of 124 teams in NCAA D1. And we have lost our last four games by an average of 21 points. That makes things difficult since we only score an average of 16 points a game. Now, one hopes Coach Mack will be able to turn around this crew. But as I've said to you before, you can't expect conference championships in the first year. This is a process. But next week, I'll be breaking down the defensive side and giving them their midterm grades. All right, Scott, let's talk a little bit about this football team. After beating CU, they had such high hopes. Now mm. we are six games in. We only have one win. What do you think is the main reason that we've had these five losses? Well, you know, I've, I've sort of been beating up CSU, but if you actually look at our schedule, we have not had the easiest run of games. Mm -hmm. Almost every single team that we've played has, is up to four wins already, except against Air Force, the one team that's sort of in all, our ballpark. And you know, after that first quarter, we actually played right there with them. The one game, of for, unfortunately, that we've won is against CU, and we've, we all know their struggles so far this year. So you know, it's really easy to pin a lot of this on CSU, which, I mean, they're not blameless. Mm -hmm. But you got to take into account our opponents. Absolutely. Have a, had a pretty tough schedule the past yeah. couple of weeks. Now, Scott, I know you're grading the defense on next week's show. But let's discuss them a little bit. They've really been playing pretty well. And I thought they played especially well this weekend against Fresno State. Yeah, this past weekend against Fresno State, they were able to stop one of the best running, at or, uh, excuse me, passing attacks mm -hmm. in all of college football, led by Derek Carr. We held them to just 217 yards passing. That's pretty impressive, and they seem to have really answered the call set out by Coach Mack when he said that they, he thought that uh, they just hadn't been playing with enough heart. They, he thought they were giving up. So uh, let's hope they can continue to prove him wrong in the second half of the season. Absolutely. I'm very pleased with the defense. They've been playing really well. Yeah. Now, Coach Mack spoke about the team after the game, and he really felt sorry for the fans of the football team. Mack went on to say, quote, I'm very disappointed for the fans. It's disappointing that we're not giving them something tangible to feel good about, end quote. Coach then went on to say, quote, as I said, I see what we're doing and I see the guys we're doing it with, and the Rams are going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future. I guarantee that, end quote. Now, Scott, do you believe what Coach Mack is saying, or do you think he's just trying to give us some false hope? 
I, I believe it to an extent, but the key word in that quote is the word future. Mm -hmm. Very ambiguous, and he knows that it's ambiguous. Uh, he just needs to get his recruits in here, then maybe we'll be able to start winning. Absolutely. It's hard with some of Fairchild's recruits. So, after the break, we will see what happens when Peter Parker decides to play dodgeball. All right, it's not the real Peter Parker, but this guy could definitely be Spider-Man. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. Keep students in school. Visit BoostUp.org and take the first step. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. And Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative. It's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Hey, and welcome back to CTV Sports. I'm Riley Adams. He's Scott Houston. Charmed. And now it is time for a little In Case You Missed It, where we show you all the sports stories and videos that may have flown under your radar last week. Scott, you ready? Always. All right, this is a good one. We already know how good Michael Phelps is at swimming, but it turns out he may have found his new passion. During the Alfred Dunhill Lynx Championship, Phelps decides to putt, but this is no ordinary putt. It's a 153-foot putt. There's no way he puts it in from that far away, right? No, of course. It's certainly not the <laughs> longest recorded putt in the history of golf. Mm -mm. Oh, wait, yeah, it is. And he nails it. You know what's sad? He's already so good at uh, swimming, he can be this good at golf. I'm so bad at golf, I'm lucky if I can get under 100. Oh, absolutely. Share some talent with the rest of us, Phelps. You're good Seriously. at everything. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Riley, do you remember Pete Thomas? Me neither. <laughs> well, he transferred to North Carolina State, and the Wolf Pack did something pretty impressive on Saturday by beating Florida State, the third-ranked team in the nation. And one NC State fan was really happy about it. So excited, in fact, that he decided to take his shirt off. There, uh, oh, look at him. The NC State <laughs> is uh, the Wolf Pack, right? Now this guy is most likely the alpha dog of the Wolf Pack, probably because he ate the alpha dog. He's sexy and he knows it. You know, Scott, at least he's got confidence, but I've got one key question. Where on earth did that pole come from? Probably brought it along with him. <laughs> <laughs> probably, or, yeah, he's borrowing it from that fan, uh, that Bears fan in abs the back of the pickup truck. Oh, absolutely. Truck. Oh, they yeah. uh, probably hang yes, out together. <laughs> now, Scott, do you believe in superheroes? I am a superhero. Uh, you I didn't know that? I believe it. Okay, I believe well, it now. <laughs> well, we may have our very first Spider-Man sighting. During this dodgeball game, the mystery man in blue shirt appears to be getting, oh, up in the air. Look at him, ninja style. Ninja. Let's see that one more time. Oh, misses the ball that goes under him and gets the kid out. This kid on the right is freaking out. Going full <laughs> Matrix with that. And fun fact about this and the Matrix, it is actually more entertaining than The Matrix 2 or 3. I completely agree. Terrible and I, movies. I agree. And I don't think anybody on that <laughs> dodgeball court was really expecting him to do that. No, not at all. Uh, the guy on the right, if you see him, grabbing his head. Oh, he's so confused. I would be screaming. They look like they're in a middle school gym. That's pretty impressive. If he's in middle school and he's able to do that, I want what he's drinking. I can't wait to see what he does in his future dodgeball Unbelievable. career. Unbelievable. <laughs> He'll be on ESPN 8, The Ocho. Absolutely. Now that's all we've got for you here at CTV Sports. Remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for all of your up-to-date CSU sports news. Also make sure you follow us at CTV11.com under the sports section to see all of our stories or episodes of the sports shows that you may have missed. Now we'll see you next week when Scott gives the Rams football defense their midterm grades. For Scott Houston, I'm Riley Adams. We'll see you next week. Students are responsible for all CTV content. Therefore, they bear responsibility for the decisions they make. CTV is not an official program of Colorado State University, but is produced by an independent nonprofit corporation using the name CTV pursuant to a license granted by CSU.